All right, guys. I'm uh, sitting here with Michelle and, and the director and some of the guys from Best and the Most Beautiful Things. Thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah, thanks for having um, us. Why don't you start, start by just telling me in your own words what the film's about. Michelle? Oh, um, <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I feel very uh, grateful uh, because these guys had to do all the hard work. I just ran around and ran my mouth a whole lot, and I don't know if you can tell, but I like talking anyway, so. But the film, to me, is about individuality. It's about being yourself, embracing who you are, um, looking adversity in the face and, you know, kicking gender norms in the butt and, you know, all that, all that good stuff. It also has a fuzzy cat in it, which everyone likes. Yeah. So we're just going to have Michelle answer all our questions. <laughs> today. She's going to do better me. than Bye us, no me. matter what. I'll just keep shooting them out. She should write our log lines yeah. for us. I don't know what that is, so I don't know if I'd be too good at that. <laughs> Trust me, you already are. So, so if nobody's, if, if I've never seen the movie before, what, what can I expect from the movie as far as a story, you know, from a story standpoint? I would, I would say it would say a coming of age film mm -hmm. about a young girl with, uh, who's legally blind with Asperger's and she comes to of age in very provocative ways. Okay. So um, it's a, she's searching for independence after school um, and she finds that she finds community and independence in very provocative ways. Um, there's a 75% unemployment rate for the blind in our country. Really? And so it's not easy for any young person graduating from school these yeah. days. So if you have a disability, it's that much harder. And so we, can, and we wanted to kind of follow, document Michelle's journey in that way. Yeah. So, so uh, adding on to that a little bit, what made you want to do a film about, about disability and, and blindness per se? Uh, well, basically, I, I, um, I wanted to, first of all, I wanted to make a film, a documentary that was focused on something that was right in the world, not just something that was just wrong with the world. And so I, you know, had this big dream. I was like, I'm just going to Google beauty. That's the most right thing I could think of the world. So I Googled beauty and I, after searching through the internet, the best thing I found about beauty was this amazing quote by Helen Keller. And so I Googled Helen Keller and I remembered Helen Keller went to school right down the street from me at Perkins School for the Blind. And I Googled Perkins School for the Blind, and then I saw that there was this unemployment rate. And I thought, well, if I could go volunteer at that school, and if I could tell a story that was not focused on blindness, if I could f find a compelling person and tell their story that and it wasn't just focused on blindness, that would be a way to humanize someone with a um, disability. And so that was, um, that was my goal, and I went there and volunteered, and then Michelle introduced herself to me with her indomitable outgoing spirit. She introduced herself to me. Yeah, and, I, you know, I found you. I, I yeah. saw you <laughs> sitting on the sidelines and I'm like, that just won't do. I have to go talk to this guy. Mm -hmm. And great. after five minutes of talking to Michelle, I said, uh, would you like a documentary about you? And she said, sure. And like six years later, we're here talking to you. That's so. wonderful. That's a great, that's great. A great story, great process to, to go through, I'm sure. So Michelle, talk a little bit about what does this mean to you? What does it mean to have this story out there? What does it mean to, to show people, you know, a little bit more about you know, your experience and, and what it's like with a disability and, and things like that? Well, uh, two things come to mind. Uh, the first is that, and this is something I actually say in the film, there are things that I say and do in the documentary that um, some people, particularly more conservative people, would be like, why don't you keep that to yourself? And the reason that I don't, besides the fact that I'm just kind of kind of person who, you know, doesn't like to lock it all up inside. I like to share my world with the rest of the world. Um, it, the, other, the other reason is, is that I think that it may, it's possible that if I say something, it might help other people to say something, or if I say something, it might help other people to realize that, you know, oh, I, I always liked that, or oh, I do that, and, um, it might help them find that, you know, even though we're all different, which is great, we're also all kind of the same, which is also great. Uh, the other thing is um, that I w I'm hoping, like, like Garrett said, I was hoping to show people that people with disabilities were people, and we really like it when you treat us like people, you know, not like, I don't know, like sad puppy dogs or something, <laughs> or like pathetic, you know, people who can't do anything for themselves. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, people need to be treated the same. Yeah, no exactly. What, no matter what they are. No yeah. Matter what they're like. I, I always want to, like when I, like at the TSA or whatever, I always want to yell at people and say, 
talk to me, don't talk to my mom. I have a mouth and I know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's right about that. I can oh, yes. That's <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's great. You have such a such an outgoing, you know, unreserved personality. I think that's that's part of why you were such a good subject for the film, I'd imagine. Sounds like me. <laughs> she's not a wallflower. No. Yeah. Not yeah. afraid to speak your mind. Yeah. That's great. So to talk a little bit about, you know, you guys are here at the festival, films uh, getting premiered in front of people. Uh, what, is the, what has it been like for you so far? What do you, you know, expect people to take away from the film? What do you hope people will see? Talk about the process of getting accepted into the festival and, and what you've experienced so far. Well, we've, uh, you know, we're just starting our festival circuit now. This is, I think, our third festival. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, third, yeah. Thank you. Michelle's been to all three of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's wonderful to be invited to this festival because th th this is a this is one of the bigger festivals in the second tier of festivals out yeah. there, and it's it's a great place for exciting films. We met some really cool people last night at a party who are here for the festival, so we're proud to share the film with with these people. Our main interest when we have audiences watch this film is to have them forget that they're watching a documentary film. Because usually when you walk into a documentary, you think you're going to be taught something about an issue. And that happens in our film, but it's very submerged below learning about a person. And when you learn about a person, it feels like any kind of movie. So that happens a lot in our screenings of people just identify with Michelle and forget that there's a another issue going on there. And then at the end of the film, they cheer the film because she's such a rock star <laughs> so we love to see people connect with her and that more so than the film itself I've done a number of films in my career and I'm less interested in the filmmaking aspect of this one than I am the character so people don't have a lot to say about the filmmaking they have a lot to say about Michelle that to us is a victory yeah. it's really it's fun that. it's um, you know people have this idea of documentaries that they're gonna talk down to you they're going to lecture you. And while there are things to learn, I think, from the film, there's definitely things, things that I've learned through watching other people watch it and hearing their reactions and also through, you know, um, being filmed. Uh, but it's, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not accusatory and it's not condescending. It's not like, hey, we know you treat blind people like this. Stop it, you're mean. It's, you know, there's parts that people laugh at. There's parts that even though I've seen it like eight times now, I still laugh at. Um, and, you know, there, there, there are definitely some parts that are probably going to make you mad uh, because there are some people who are just not nice and, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not being mean a lot of times, their hearts are in the right place, otherwise we wouldn't have gotten them to say the things they said on camera. But, you know, to me, it's, it's the, the film is, um, it's, it's a lot more like, you know, there's a lot more of a fun, lighthearted romp to it than a, lot of, than a lot of documentaries that I've seen. And I like documentaries. Mm -hmm. I know it was fun to make. <laughs> For six years. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anytime yeah. they'd come over, it'd be like a big party. Plus, I'd get a lot of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and I tell, and I just say, I say quickly is like, yeah. after I, I volunteered there on my own and found Michelle introduced herself to me, it was still just me. And the reason why it took six years is because I had to get you know have other people convince other people this could be an interesting story. And for and I was able to do that over the six years. So for instance, Jeff Consiglio, he's and one of the most uh, uh, successful filmmakers in LA, documentary filmmakers, Oscar winning, Emmy winning. And um, I just basically got on Google again and Googled my, my dream <laughs> editor. And I sent him a little clip of Michelle and that Perkins and he, he, he emailed me back and he's like, that girl there and the, you know, that young girl there, you've been focusing on her? And, and I said, yes. And he said, let's talk on the phone. And then also Kevin Bright happened, um, we got him involved, Kevin Bright was the guy who created or executive producer of t uh, TV show Friends, and he happened to be at Perkins, and he got involved. So that's what m brought us to this wonderful festival. So yeah, he was a good friend of mine before I um, Garrett even um, met him. I think mm -hmm. um, I had been in his his film class that he did, which was um, very entertaining. And my friends and I, some of we, some of us, still have some inside jokes from that because it was so it was so crazy and so fun. Yeah, I bet. 
How's the how's the reception been so far in the other festivals you've been to and the people that have seen it? Even the people that you know you talk about starting by yourself and, and bringing people into it. It seems like people have been pretty pretty open to the idea and pretty interested in the idea. Well, I've gotten a lot of hugs, so yeah. that's good. That's nice. That's nice. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> ah, I forgot how to talk. Sorry. <laughs> we, yeah, we were we were lucky enough to have a world premiere at South by Southwest, right? right? And that yeah. was it was really really great. Yeah. yeah, and then we just came from Florida Film Festival where we won a special jury award, oh, wow. which we're very excited about. It was for uh, uh, individuality and human spirit. They, they, they invented a jury award just for, for us and <laughs> that. That's great. Yeah, and so we're here, and then as soon as we got here, I mean, the hospitality at the Dallas International Film Festival has been unbelievable. Picking us up at the airport, um, gave us a mini tour through Dallas getting here, and just telling us about Dallas. and. Everybody I've met just just a passion for films here, and it makes it makes it kind of validates what we do, you know. Yeah. yeah. For all the all those hours struggling to make this, and it, mm-hmm. it all validates. Yeah, it us. makes you think you're doing something right, other the long hours and no sleep. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> cool. So where was the shot? Where's the movie shot? It was shot in at Perkins School for the Blind is where we met Michelle. That's in Watertown, Mass. That's where Helen Keller, uh, her alma mater, and and then Michelle. You want to tell them where you're from? I am, I, well, I was born, well, I was raised in Bradford, Maine, which is a small town. I was raised on a dirt road where um, my dad literally got to pick the uh, street address and named it uh, 92 because that's the year I was born. Um, and I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We could have um, put that in the film. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, um, but now I live in, in Bangor, I live in my own apartment, but at the time that the filming was going on, most of the time that, that that was going on, I was living with my mom. And she used to live in Bangor, and now she lives in Corinth, so we're kind of all over the place, but in the same area, so that's good. Okay. We get to see each other a lot. So, you know, the, the film talks about a, a controversial first love. You know, how much, how much of this stuff is, is real? How much of this stuff is true from your own experiences? Oh, so much. Um, I don't know if you were talking to me, were you? It just in general, just um, the, the three of you. Well, uh, I, I'm, uh, let's see here. Well, I'm not dating the same guy anymore, but he and I are still really good friends. There were some emotional incompatibilities. But he and I, are, again, are still really good friends, and I'm still very grateful for the months that we had together, even though there were some rough patches. Um, you know, it, it is, to a lot of people, it is, it is very controversial. Um, but I think what the important thing is, is, um, you know, if it makes you happy and, you're, and no one is being harmed, uh, I think that's, that's what's important. And, um, for for me, it really it, it really helped me. I learned all these things that I, I never knew about. I mean, before I went to Perkins, I I mean not before I went to Perkins, before I left Perkins, I I knew that that this was the kind of alternative lifestyle that I was going to want to be in the, the BDSM lifestyle. Um, but I you know I learned so much through you know having a partner uh, who was. Um, very invested in it as well. Met him at a party, um, and it it was a great it was a great experience. And now I, I have a different boyfriend now. He lives in New York right now. He's um, working, trying to get enough money to get his own car and his own place so that we can visit each other more. And uh, he's also in the lifestyle. So I'm I feel very very lucky to have found such awesome people to surround myself with in the lifestyle. Yeah. That's great. And I'll, I'll say I, I did not know uh, filming that Michelle was into that lifestyle. Took like a couple years into filming, uh, more than a couple years. But uh, we wanted to keep filming with, you know, when Jeff Consiglio came on board, we uh, we were thinking about uh, ending the film when Michelle graduated high school, Perkins School for the Blind. It was going to be a happy story. She graduates and goes off. And then we found out about, they call it the cliff. And if you're disabled in this country and you graduate high school, they, they call it you falling off a cliff. You fall um, and you become isolated in your home, parents' home. Sometimes collecting disability, but with no job and no opportunities, you just almost disappear. And um, there's like an invisible demographic in this country. And so we, that's what we wanted to document. And so, but Michelle did find community even in that room. She did end up isolated in her home, but she found community online through this mm-hmm. BDSM community. And through all of us, you know, I at first I wasn't gonna 
thinking we should film that, but then, you know, Michelle, it's true to Michelle's story. Yep. Right? It's mm -hmm. part it's a part yeah. of who I am. It's in some ways it's you know, it's very much uh, separate from, you know, the, the the me that goes out and buys groceries, but in some ways it's it's really not because there are these sort of um, just like sort of um, tendencies within me that I think I've had since I was uh, very little, if not since I was born. Um, so uh, it, it, it didn't, um, when, when we were talking about, about including it, you know, there was of course the rules, no one, no one who's not, uh, who was not given consent to be in the film will be mentioned or, or shown and we're not going to show, you know, where, you know, sort of undisclosed locations are and things like that and we, we figured that all out and then after that, you know, it was, it was a matter of how we were going to, um, how we were going to um, approach it and, I mean, as being someone who was not on the technical end of things, I was just running around having a good time, uh, you know, it was really interesting to, you know, it was it was a it was a sensitive subject not because I think that it's inherently you know bad or weird or in a bad way I think it's more like you know we didn't want to um, throw anyone under the bus. Mm. Yeah, makes sense. So talk about talk about your goals for this film, your aspirations, what you hope people take away from it, you know who you hope sees it as far as release and and you know what's next. Well, we're still um, we're in discussions on releasing the film. Uh, that will probably take a while, as it usually does. The film will probably find its way out into the world later in the summer or in the fall. Um, like any filmmakers, we're looking for the widest release possible. We're we're very interested in people getting to know Michelle. That's that's our main thing. Um, Garrett and Michelle and others involved in the film have a, a very strong interest in trying to raise the discussion about disability in the workplace and in social environments. That's going to come along with the film, but our number one goal is just to get people to see it and learn th that sort of um, wall shattering that you get when you meet Michelle Smith and you learn that a disabled person is not just like everybody else but is also a leader in yeah. many ways. Michelle right. is a leader in many ways. So I've been told I'm quite disarming. You're very disarming. <laughs> so we're 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 very interested in as many people as possible seeing that. So we're we're hopeful for a good release. Mm -hmm. And we're optimistic. One little thing, you were talking about the cliff, Garrett. Do you know what I call that? What? I call it the escalator to nowhere, which is a Simpsons reference. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll just say that um, from here, we're, we're, we're very excited to be taking the film to the Independent Film Festival of Boston, where we, we started this all. And, right. and so we're going to have a, a lot of family and friends there. And from there, we're going to be going to Hot Docs in Toronto. Very excited for that. Can't wait to get a Kinder Egg for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> and then from there, we're going to Bentonville, which is a Gina Davis's film festival about uh, for films about powerful women made by powerful women oh, wow. and so Yay. this is about a powerful woman and we also have two powerful producers on our film Mariana Garfinkel and Jordan Salvatoriello and we have great incredible and both, both cinematographers both camera people were female so it's like don't, yeah don't forget about Sarah, Sarah Ginsburg Sarah mm -hmm. Ginsburg and Jordan were so it was um, yeah so we're proud of that too and then some festivals the festivals are great because I mean it's a it's a great chance for people to meet Michelle one-on-one -on -one. So come tonight if you're gonna. If this is gonna be yeah. done today, come tonight, and Michelle gives out free hugs. Oh so. yes, yeah. free <laughs> free fuzzy hugs, and um, we can talk about anything from you know some of the deeper meanings of some of the more serious scenes in the film to who your favorite you know character from Thomas the Tank Engine is or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I love to talk and I love to meet new people. So get, don't don't be afraid if you see me around. Just come up and say hi. I love to meet you. Absolutely. I'm sure people love to meet you, too. Cool, guys. Well, uh, thanks for sitting down. I wish you guys the best and, yeah. and hope lots of people see it and only best thing for the film. And thanks very much, Ralph. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Appreciate it.